previously, we've talked about the distribution of our sample mean X bar and how under some circumstances, X bar is normally distributed. Under other circumstances, it can be approximated with a normal distribution and sometimes it's not even approximately normal. We've talked about P hat, how depending on the circumstances, we may or may not be able to approximate P hat with a normal distribution. So now we want to focus in on the sample variance and the distribution of it which in some ways is more complicated, in other ways it's easier to decide. Okay, so let's look at S squared, the sample variance. Here it goes. S squared is not nicely distributed. It doesn't matter what the population looks like that you're sampling from, you're not gonna know the behavior of S squared or equivalently the sample standard deviation S just doesn't happen okay it changes every population you sample from when that distribution changes that impacts how s and s squared behave okay. however under the right circumstances we may not know how s squared behaves but if we make some adjustments we do a transformation okay, we can relate the behavior of s squared to the behavior of a chi squared distribution okay. so to do this we do need to look at the population being sampled from, our parent population. The parent population has to be normal. And as long as the population being sampled from is normal, then we can take and transform our sample variance S squared into a chi-squared distribution okay, by taking n minus 1 times S squared divided by sigma squared. So we don't know how S behaves, but if we modify S and S squared by multiplying and dividing by the right combination, then the result behaves in a very predictable way. So anytime we have a question about the distribution of S or S squared, like what's the probability that the variance or the standard deviation of a sample does something, okay, as long as the population is normally distributed, then we're going to turn the question from a question about S and S squared into a question about a chi-squared distribution, and we know how to handle that. Now, I want you to notice here, right? sample size being more than 30 does not matter. The only thing that matters is the population that's being sampled from has to be normal. Right? If the population is not normal, and your sample size is 8 billion, X bar behaves nicely, but S squared does not. Okay, now let's look at some examples. So we've had this information before when we were talking about the sample mean X bar. Okay, so we're talking about the hill route, okay? The time to take one full loop around campus, normally distributed with a mean of 24.4 minutes and a standard deviation of 3.9 minutes. And we're asked, what is the probability that the variance in the amount of time it takes, 250 round trips to be made, will be more than 36 minutes squared? Remember, variance, the units are squared. So the variance here is the variance of the 250 trips. It's a lot of trips, but it's still a sample. So our, the variance, the word variance here, okay, is S squared, not sigma squared. So we want to know the probability that our sample variance is more than or greater than 36 minutes. Just like with X bar and P hat, we need to know how S squared behaves. We need to know the distribution. Okay. Now, we don't know the distribution of S squared literally, but we do know how to manipulate okay, or adjust S squared so it will behave right if things are good. Okay, so, we have to look to the population that's being sampled from. And again, we're talking about the loop times, and those are normally distributed. So the population we are sampling from, the parent population is normally distributed. And so what does that mean for the sample variance for S squared? Because the population being sampled from is normally distributed, we can use our equation that we had a minute ago to change this from a question about S squared being bigger than 36 into 
the probability that a chi-squared score is bigger than some transform value. And we'll look at the details of how to calculate that probability uh, in the very near future. But here we just want to know whether or not it's possible to convert our sample variance question into a chi-squared question. And we can because the population is normally distributed. In this problem, we're going to roll a fair six-sided die 200 times, and we want to know the probability that the variance will be less than 2.2. So we're going to roll 200 times. That's a sample, and we want to know about the variance. So the variance there is the sample variance, not the population variance. So that's S squared, not sigma squared. Okay, so translating this into notation, this is asking the probability that S squared is less than 2.2. And if we were able to find that probability, we'd have to know how S squared behaves. We'd need to know the distribution of S squared. So we have to look at the population being sampled from. Okay, so we're rolling the die. When we roll the die, we're going to get a number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6. That's a discrete population. Okay, discrete populations are not continuous by definition. And among other things, normal distributions are first and foremost continuous, and then they have some extra conditions that have to be true. So the population we're sampling from here is absolutely not a normal distribution. So what does that mean for S squared? Okay, so the sample variance cannot be turned into a chi-squared distribution because the population being sampled from is not normal. And so not only do we not know how S squared is going to behave by itself, if we m adjust S squared by multiplying by N minus one and dividing by sigma squared, that is not gonna behave like a chi-squared distribution. Okay, so I want you to notice here, sample size is 200, that's way bigger than 30. But that's totally irrelevant when it comes to S and S squared. That wouldn't matter if we were talking about X bar. Okay, right? With X bar, the population not being normal, okay, would not be a problem because the sample size is more than 30. Then X bar would be approximately normal. But we're looking at S squared. Okay, so the distribution of S squared is not directly related to a chi-square distribution. We cannot use our equation to transform this probability statement about S squared into a probability statement about a chi-squared distribution. We just simply can't do this particular problem with the tools we have in this class. Uh, once again, we're gonna go back to the UC and get some food. So as we talked about when we were dealing with the uh, sample mean, at right, the time you wait in line is skewed left with a mean of 22 minutes and a standard deviation of six minutes. That's information we're being given. And then we're asked, what is the probability that the standard deviation in wait times for 15 randomly selected patrons is less than 10 minutes? Okay, so that's the question we're trying to answer. Okay, so the variable we're interested in is the standard deviation. Okay, we want to know the probability that the standard deviation does something. So that standard deviation is either sigma or s. That's our two symbols, depending on whether or not that represents the standard deviation of a population or a sample. Okay, so again, that standard deviation is for wait times of 15 randomly selected patrons. So those 15 wait times would be a sample. They're not all the possible wait times. Okay, so this is the probability that s is less than 10. In the previous two examples, we were looking at S squared, the sample variance. Now I want you to see that any questions about S is a question about S squared and vice versa. So the probability that S is less than 10 is the probability that S squared is less than 10 squared, or in other words, the probability that the sample variance is less than 100. Okay, so the way we would handle this question would be exactly the same regardless of whether it said what's the probably the standard deviation for wait times of 15 people is less than 10 minutes or if it said what's the probably the variance 
for the 15 people is less than 100 minutes squared. Okay, same question, right? because S and S squared are directly related. So we need to know the distribution of S slash S squared. Okay. The population we're sampling from okay. is skewed left. That is most definitely not normal. So we talked about this distribution of S squared and what had to be true. The population we were sampling from had to be normally distributed. Okay, so S squared and therefore S, right? Because to convert S, all we gotta do is square it and then we're converting S squared from that point on. Okay, so we cannot convert S into a chi-square distribution Okay, so the distribution of our sample standard deviation slash sample variance, okay, they're not related to the chi-square distribution and we can't find this probability. For our last example, okay, we're gonna talk about painting the rock again. In five years are randomly selected, what's probably that the standard deviation in the number of people that took part in painting the rock is more than 50. Okay, so, and the first sentence is all information about how many people paint the rock each year. And the thing we're trying to determine is something about the, probably the standard deviation. And that standard deviation is for the five years. That's a sample standard deviation. So that sample standard deviation is S, not sigma. We want to know probably that S is greater than 50. I want to remind you that that's the exact same thing as saying what's probably that S squared is bigger than 50 squared, which would be 2,500. So again, synonymous questions. Probably the standard deviation is bigger than 50. Probably the variance is bigger than 2,500. Those probabilities will be the same because they are the same event. Okay, so we need to know the distribution of S or S squared. Either way you want to look at that. Okay, so we got to look at the population being sampled from. And we were told that the number of students that paint the rock each year are approximately normally distributed. Because the population being sampled from was normally distributed, that means our standard deviation can be turned into a chi-squared score. Okay, so that question, the probably that 50, right, that the standard deviation is greater than 50, can be turned into a question about the probability that a chi-squared score does something. Okay, so the distribution of S is directly related to a chi-squared distribution. We could use our chi-squared CDF on the TI calculators to find that probability if we were going to find that probability, which we're not right now, right? All we care about is the distribution at this moment. Okay, so soon we'll come back and do the actual probability of the standard deviation being more than 50, but not here. If you have any questions about the topics covered in this video, or anything else that's happening in your statistical reasoning class, talk to your instructor, go to their office hours, or take advantage of the free tutoring available in the Math Tutorial Center. Good luck, and go Vols!